Unicorns and glitter and taxidermy critters are just some of the things they like. They also enjoy 80s hair bands, Grizzly Adams and John Goodman, so if you think that's weird then you can take a hike. But the things they enjoy the most are making art and cracking jokes. So without further ado, here are your hosts. You've got your two artsy gals, your two artsy gals. Here are your two artsy gals. Hey everybody, this is Katie. And this is Lonnie. <laughs> And you're listening to Two Arts of Gals. Yay! <laughs> we're kind of goofy this afternoon. Mm-hmm. We're getting a little punchy because we're recording. We normally only record two episodes in one day, but this is our third of the day. We have another one coming up that we're still recording. And I should apologize ahead of time right now because we're nibbling on wasabi almonds while we're talking. We'll try not to be too crunchy and talky, but <laughs> we're not robots. we got to have some fuel, yo. we got to have some food in our face holes. And I'm just admiring this Pinterest board full of calligraphy. Awesome. I'm kind of feeling a little jealous. Okay, I am People's very talent. jealous of calligraphers that know their shit. I because, mean, right? Yeah, I can't even, I'm like... It's mind-blowing. Yeah. And in case you have not guessed, calligraphy is our subject today. Yes. We're talking about it. It's cool stuff. I love it. Calligraphy is fucking awesome. So the dictionary definition of calligraphy is handwriting or pen- penmanship or simply beautiful writing. The word has its roots in the Greek language. Kali means beautiful. Graphia is Greek for writing. So beautiful writing is really what it's called. Mm-hmm. There's a lot more to it than that, though. I mean, it's out of control. It's mm-hmm. awesome. I love this shit. Mm-hmm. I, it's been something that I've been practicing at lately. I kind of want to... My penmanship, I have noticed since I have become... Just out of the way the world works. Are you trying to hide your nut chewing? Uh-huh. You're funny. Sorry, I wondered what you were doing. <laughs> um, trying I've, to muffle it. <laughs> I've definitely noticed uh, since I type more often to write now, because well, it's the digital age. Mm-hmm. I mean, I do most of my work on the computer. I we, we email back and forth. I do make an effort to write handwritten letters and stuff, but my penmanship has suffered. Yeah, mine for too. All the typing that I do. Yeah. And it's something that I'm trying to improve upon. I am a graphic designer, and I'm a font geek. I I love beautiful handwriting, and I would very much like for people to look at my work and go, my God, you have beautiful handwriting. Yes. Sometimes. So I am practicing calligraphy. I've taken a couple of online classes, which I really recommend. Skillshare has a great, they have some great calligraphy instructors, which I used to pay for a membership for Skillshare. It's $20 a month. I personally didn't find that I was able to realistically keep up with taking classes yeah, and on a level that would justify $20 a month. They still have a lot of free classes, and they also have, um, you can just pay for individual classes. Oh, okay. So I would, I really liked the calligraphy class that I took. I cannot remember the name of the instructor, but she was really great, and it was more copper plate calligraphy than like the, the italic or black letter or the heavy like medieval looking shit yeah which is also beautiful but i like the really scrolly fancy yeah. stuff yeah personally i mean that's just kind of what my aesthetic is there are different styles so we'll just go into that since i brought it up okay i'm going to put up a chart or a link to the uh it's the dummies.com site i kind of don't like those books because they're but but there are they have some cool books and they have some cool stuff i own a couple of them so I just find the four dummies a little bit insulting. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like that one store downtown that's like the the, the clothing store for for plus sizes. That it's What's all, it called? it's called Fat Fancy. Oh, wow. I fucking love the store, but yeah. I hate the name. Yeah. Because I do not find my fat fancy. Yeah. <laughs> I find my fat to be offensive. But, <laughs> but anyway. Mine, yeah, mine is uncomfortable. <laughs> um, on the dummies website, they have a really great breakdown of I'm sorry. I'm going to have to chew this nut because now I feel like I'm being rude. <laughs> I know. I have, I'm going to have to stop the almonds. They're so addictive, They're though. so good. People, Blue Diamond Wasabi Almonds mm-hmm. are like fucking crap. Mm-hmm. You can't put them down. There's a really great breakdown of the different styles of calligraphy on that website, and I'll link it in the show notes on, the, on, on our blog. So you have the italic, 
It's awesome. It looks great. Mm -hmm. There's black letter, which is the really heavy kind of old English looking style calligraphy. Yeah. It's really thick lines and thin lines and real blocky and chunky looking. Um, there's Roman, which is a little bit more rounded, I would say. It's big and rounded. Book hand or foundation hand is very similar to Roman, but it seems to be a little bit more elongated. There's unical and then there's copper plate, which is copper plate is very scrolly and pretty. It's like the cursive fancy stuff. It's yeah. what you see like on wedding invitations. Yeah. And sometimes you even see it on wedding invitations and you go like, I don't know what the fuck this says. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what what is this? Graphic design one oh one people use the fancy shit for like the bigger words and the title like the names and stuff, but pick a little more low key font to actually give information that you need people to have. Yeah. Yes. One that matches or complements. Yes. Your big fancy one. Oh my god, I just put another almond in my mouth. I can't. I've got to move these. Holy shit. I know. I want to eat them all right I'm now. I'm sorry. We're out of control with the almonds today. <laughs> I didn't realize I, was hung realize I was hungry until we started recording. I know. And now I'm like, Lonnie and I usually eat lunch. We're working, <laughs> we're working hard for you guys today. <laughs> Starving ourselves. We are, because we only normally do two episodes. And then we're, re we're re recording all those four. And it makes it even worse because we already did all these episodes. Yes, I'm trying to remember i know i'm trying to remember i have a question though i have an answer maybe um it might be a smart ass one so i'm looking but... at our pinterest page about all these cool calligraphies does every like does every font have a name or is this like would some of this be considered like is it freestyle it's freestyle it like... it's just people doing their own thing okay because it's like, very beautiful and i love it this it's... is people's own freestyle work that they're okay they're doing so and i think each calligrapher Although there are some that, that really um, specialize in, like, italic writing or black letter or Roman. Like, there are people have mm -hmm. their specialties. Graphic designers and artists who use this in their work, especially I'd say graphic designers get pretty wild with this. Oh, my God. I follow these guys on Instagram, and now I have to fucking find them again because they're amazing. So I'm going to keep talking while I look for them. I ended up in this other Yeah, world. no, sorry. Graphic I... designers tend to be really, like, <laughs> that do calligraphy and stuff and do lettering. I'm envious. Yeah. Like, that's a graphic it's design really skill cool. that I don't really have. And this looks like they use a combination of watercolor. And, I, I mean, I'm amazed by the creativity and the endless possibilities and how beautiful you can make a simple note or well, something, you know? Well, and you can actually, if you get really good at... at um, if you get really good at lettering and calligraphy, you can make money doing that. Like, people hire calligraphers all the yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, so, I mean, like, even, like, when you get your graduation and you graduate from somewhere, or you don't really see that a lot anymore. Most of it's typed up and printed off these days. But, but people do, do still go the extra mile to have things handwritten in calligraphy. And people hire calligraphers all the time. Like, not everyone can do that. Yeah. I mean, rad. I'm still working on learning, and I love I love doing it. I like to write. I like to write letters, and I write my letters with my dip pens. Fun. And I seal them with sealing wax, because it's fancy and special. Yeah. And I love it. But I think I mentioned this when we recorded this episode before. I really want to do an episode on letter writing. Oh, yeah. Like, just because I think it's a dying art. Yeah. And I think that it, I don't know, I find when I write a letter, I'm more invested in the communication. Yes. Like when I'm texting or I'm emailing or I'm messaging someone on Facebook, it's like a quick technical. Yes. Even when I'm typing a letter, it's not the same as setting down and getting your stationery out and getting your pens out and writing a letter to someone. Yeah. It gives a more heartfelt communication. Honestly, I don't know. Did I just sound like a total goober? <laughs> so we have a lot of examples of calligraphy pens, uh, strokes that you can use, uh, basic strokes on the Pinterest board for this page. Um, there are a lot of different pens. So you have calligraphy felt pens. I know Sharpie makes, uh, they have a brand of pens that is just, they're chiseled so oh, for, yeah, for yeah. calligraphy. There are felt pens that are made specifically for that. My grandpa used to have them around a lot. 
I can remember I got in trouble for playing with them once because I was coloring with them. Oh. Then you have your calligraphy cartridge pens, which are those pens that you buy that come with the the different color plastic cartridges that you shove down in the pen and screw it on. Mm -hmm. I have found that those are complete a waste of money. Yeah. To me, and maybe there are more high-end brands of these that I'm unaware of, but the ink dries out when you use it. Like, in theory, you should be able to swap out all these colors, Mm -hmm. but once you take it out of the pen, it has had a little hole poked in it, and no matter what you do, that ink dries out. Yeah. It's a way you're just throwing your money away. And I don't think that the fountain pens, like the, or the pen, I don't think that it has quite the quality of like your, your nibs from dipping pens and stuff. Yeah. That's been my experience too. So, and then you, you have your dip pens, which is like your straight calligraphy pens, which is, they have a nib that you put on. We'll talk more about nibs in a second. Um, And you dip them in ink and straight is self-explanatory it's just a straight pen it's the handle part that they're describing and then they have an oblique calligraphy pen which we have examples of on the pinterest board again and oblique is all that for is or uh italic calligraphy so you put the nib you're actually holding a straight pen but you put the nib in a piece of the pen that's off at an angle so when you're writing it but it actually puts the nib at a slant Okay. So. That's very funny. Isn't it? It's weird looking. Yeah. It's weird to write with one. And I actually recently broke my oblique pen because I dropped it on the floor. And then when I went to push my chair out to step on it or to to <laughs> move back to look at it, I stepped on it and broke the little angled uh. section. Off. So I have to buy a new one. Um, they're not that expensive, though. And you have feather pens. I actually own a feather pen, but it has a nib on it that someone got me as a gift a long time ago. But they used to just cut the feathers yeah, back in the just day. Cut and feather at an angle, and and there you went because the hollow section of the feather would suck the ink up inside so of it. Incredible. So incredible, yeah. Humans, sometimes I we know. have good ideas. Humans are inventive. I know so we're pretty awesome as people. <laughs> Congratulations, humans. Yes. <laughs> so, and then there are other kinds of pens, and I should have gotten it out before we started because I wanted to show it to you, and I didn't show it to you. Oh, okay, hey, you were going to show it last time. I'm going to go get it right now. She has so. a glass pen. I have a glass pen that I love. It's like hand blown. <laughs> I'm going to eat some almonds. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a whole letter writing kit that someone gave me once. So I'm just going to show Lonnie. I'm showing off all my stuff to Lonnie. I'll Ready? take pictures of it. Oh, wow. Okay. See, it's like hand blown, and so it's got little twists in it, so when you dip it, it sucks the ink up, and then there is actually a little angle at the tip of the... Wow. I'll take a picture of this glass pen and, and show you guys on the face. I didn't even know there was such a thing. Blog. Have you tried it? Yeah, I use it all the time. That's cool. And then you have your nibs. <clears throat> and the nibs are what, when you're using dip pens, they're what you stick in the end of the pen. They're the little metal bit. And you have round nibs. Now, there nib, are different nibs made for different things. Um, Get your nibs in order. Come on now. I'm getting my shit in order. <laughs> shut it, shut it. <laughs> so there actually are different parts to the nib. So the base of the nib is the rounded end that you stick in your pen. And then you have the shoulder of the pen is where it starts to taper in to make the uh, the point and then you have the tines the pens are all broken into the little split down the middle where the tip is so you have the tip the tines and the slit and then the breather hole all of them have this little hole in them that is what sucks the ink up when you dip it and it holds it in there I feel like there's be some sexy music playing in the background. Describing the slits and the nibs. And the <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We are such porno <laughs> heads. What is wrong with us? It's my pro- my fault. I apologize. No, I'm the same way. I'm, we're just, I'm just as dirty <laughs> as you are. So I have a pretty good link I'm going to put on the blog. It's uh, Richard Binder Fountain Pens. Um, I'm not necessarily endorsing the brand. I don't like the fountain pens per se, as I already said. Well, I like dip pens. Oh, yes, yes. Um, but there are 
So there are different styles of nibs for different writing. So a round nib is going to be pretty uniform. And I think that it is made more for uh, your heavier stroke. Uh, so it would be things like you know, just heavier writing. It would, it would make a thicker, okay. more even. Like um, if you're like bold kind yeah, of? Yeah, bold writing. Or why is this unknown person calling me over and over again and not leaving a message and not being there? It's making me fucking paranoid. Yeah, that's weird. Decline, motherfucker. Decline. Yeah. And I'm sorry that came through. I forgot that my iPad chimes in. Wow. When I get a call on my iPhone. It would be iPhone. weird to talk on that like a Well, phone. I don't, you can't answer, I don't answer calls on it, but yeah. you know, it just tells me I have a call. Um, so, stub nibs. Stub nibs are a stub nib or stub italic nib. It is a little flatter. Um, that is probably for like uh, the lettering, like uh, I would say the the I'm brain farting the black letter yeah. or heavier stuff that needs a, a crisp line. Then you have italic nibs, which they're cut at a slant, so you can oh, write okay. italic. So it just makes it easier when you're sticking in your oblique pen because it's all about the angle angle when you're writing with a dip pen. Ah, uh, yes. It. The nib is at an angle, but then it's also cut at an angle. Like, the pen's holding the nib at an angle, but then it's cut at an angle, so you can get that. So it doesn't catch. Yeah. You know, like, when your pen catches on the paper? Yes. You just kind of have to adjust your angle. Okay. Until it stops catching. So that would be what the italic nib for. Uh, or oblique nib is the same thing. Okay. For that you put in your oblique pens. Um, and again, if you get a book, I have a, a calligraphy book that I use. You can take a calligraphy class. Any of those are going to tell you when they're teaching you the strokes and movements for the specific type of calligraphy that you're learning, they're going to tell you what kind of nibs you need to do that. Yeah. Okay. That's how I know. I'm not yeah. an expert. I can't go into the store and go, I need this, 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 and this nib because I'm doing this. Because I don't know yet. Yeah. I don't. I don't remember that off the top of my head. But you can always go... You can always find that out through taking a class. And again, I really highly recommend classes. There is a website that I use to buy all of my calligraphy stuff from. It was recommended from a class I took. It's called Paper and Ink, Paper and Ink Arts. It is awesome. They have every fucking nib, every kind of ink, like anything you can imagine they have on there. Awesome. They even have specialty papers. They're great. Um, and they're all really affordable. Affordable. Like I bought these. These are pretty. Um, like this bag of nibs I have, the Nico G, which is my favorite for the really pretty uh, copper plate writing. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love this nib. Um, but there's also I haven't actually got to use these ones because I haven't. I never finished the class. They're uh, the GLT three o three and four o four. So. Uh, I bought those all from the Paper and Ink Arts awesome. website, and they're really affordable. I bought my straight pen. I, I had one already that had a wooden handle, but I bought a plastic handled one that was just a little bit more utilitarian for me. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like the wooden handled one, I don't want to fuck it up Oh yeah. when I'm doing yeah. a lot of lettering or stuff. So I got that. And so then you have your inks. And the inks... So your India ink, my favorite is, I got it out to show Lonnie, it's the Higgins Black Ink Eternal. It is, it's really dark. I love this stuff. Nice. Um, if, I think the India inks, the thing about them is they are, they're heavier bodied. And, you know, I don't know if you've played around with a lot of different inks. I find it a lot in the colored inks. They're a little thin when you use them. Like you could... You could see through them if there was something yeah. behind them. Yeah. And I don't necessarily always like that. So if you want to really do a bold, saturated writing, then use the India inks. So, and there are acrylic inks also that are, most of those tend to be waterproof. So they're not oh, going to okay. smudge or splatter. That is one thing you have to watch out with. And I do not know how left-handed people do calligraphy. Yeah. Do like, they have special pens? They must have special pens. If you are a left-handed calligrapher... Let us know. Yeah. Because, I mean, I had one of my best friends in high school was left-hander. She always had the inky pinky, they call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. She always had ink on her hand from writing. Yeah. 
I always, I was always like, why do you always have ink on your hands? She's like, because I'm left-handed. <laughs> so she showed me one day while she was writing. I'm like, oh, yeah, I get it. No, <clears> just dragging it. your hand through the, yeah. But they also have uh, fountain pen inks, which come in the cartridges. They make metallic calligraphy inks. Oh, cool. You know how I feel about the shinies. Yeah. So they have some really cool metallics. But the best thing about it is, and I learned this in a class, you can use watercolor or water down acrylic paints oh, wow. to write with, with your huh. dip pens. Some of the watercolor shit is pretty awesome. Yeah. It's really beautiful. And you can use, like, acrylic paints and gouache paints, which are kind of, yeah, there are a lot of possibilities yeah. for pretty colors. So, in addition to writing letters or notes or cards, like, the traditional uses for, like, you go to a wedding, you see your name printed, or a, a social thing, sometimes you'll see your name printed out on the card or stuff like that. That's all pretty uh, traditional, and uh, I like experimenting with calligraphy and seeing yeah. how else you can use it because you can use it when in your art journaling in your uh your altered books and mixed media art and collage mm -hmm. like really you're using anywhere you're using paper you can fit calligraphy in yeah and i even see some people make drawings with their exact like, calligraphy pens and yeah oh my god and some of the drawings are stunning especially i think i have a few examples on our page of uh, drawing in calligraphy pen, and then the writing is also incorporated yes. with it. And it, so it all has that same weight and feel and stroke yeah. that the pen has, and it gives it a really neat uh, continuity. Yes, it's super. I like it a lot. And you can also, a really cool thing, and now I went to graphic design school. I learned a little bit about making making fonts. It's not something that I want to do for a living. I'm not that great at it. But if you say you're doing, like, an embroidery project or you're going to be doing something on a canvas and you can't really use a calligraphy pen on canvas or fabric because it would catch, you can do it on paper, scan it, and scan it into your computer, and then you can print out, print it out on transfer paper, oh, you can print yeah. it out on sticker paper, you can print it out on... Fuck, they have paper for everything these days. Yeah. So... Or you can even print it out and do a tape transfer, which we'll talk about in our next episode oh, on yes. tape. So there, I'm we we're going to do an episode this summer. I think I already mentioned this, but we are going to do an episode about using inkjet printers. Oh, cool! And yeah. all the cool shit you can do with inkjet yeah. printers in your art. But this is one of the things if you're writing something really cool in calligraphy, or even if you're doing it and you don't really. I do this a lot when I have done a drawing or. I've done some hand lettering that I want to incorporate into a collage, but I don't know how I want to incorporate it, and I want to experiment around with it a little bit. I'll scan it and print it off. So then I have a copy of it that I don't care about fucking up if it doesn't work. Yeah. And then when yes. I figure out what I'm going to do with it, then I use the actual piece that I've done and uh, okay, do it that's that a good way. Idea. So you don't yeah. go like, fuck, because I hate it when I fuck stuff up like that. Yeah. It makes yeah. me so sad. I just want to cry all the time when Aww. I do it. But I've learned my lesson about stuff like that, and I just make, you know, just print off and uh, print it off or make an extra. But, but yeah, did you want to talk about some of your favorite examples that we found for this show? I don't know. I just wanted to tell a little story about um, I got to take a little class with my daughter on oh, calligraphy. Oh, that's right. Yeah, over at Reed College and learned that uh, Steve Jobs. Yeah, Steve Jobs took, that's how he yeah. got started was... It's amazing. At Reed College, so taking cool. a calligraphy class. It's the only fucking college class he ever took. Did you yeah. know that? No. Yeah. Wow. Because he dropped out. Yeah. The guy was kind of like, yeah, you know, Steve Jobs took my class. But it was cool. Was it still the same teacher there? I think so. Or he Holy knew shit. someone. I don't know. They all are connected somehow. And, I know. But it was fun because we did the dip ink uh, calligraphy. And um, we made little poems on just uh, recycled paper. I think it was just like paper bag cut out and mm -hmm. um we made these little poems and then hung them on trees around town and i can't remember there was something to it there was a whole like you know it was a thing <laughs> but it was really fun and they turned out really cool um and that's so portland but yeah it's a surprise people with random tree poetry that's awesome and pretty calligraphy writing <laughs> i found the guys that i follow on um instagram 
Danger Dust, Chalk and Lettering. They also have a, an Etsy shop now, but they post, they do this lettering, uh, most of it's in chalk, actually, so it's not technically calligraphy, yeah. but, like, the shit that they do... But it's beautiful writing. Yeah, and wow. they started out, they used to sneak in when they were in college, if, I, if these are the same people, which I think they are, like, that's chalk. Whoa. And they would sneak in and do this crazy lettering thing on the chalkboard and just leave it. And, wow. And, and they didn't know, no one knew who they were for a while, but they do some pretty mind blow. Like, I would like to see what one of them could do with a calligraphy pen in their hand. Yeah. But yeah. I follow them on, it's uh, DDCCAD is their name on there. I don't know. They're, they're, they do some pretty crazy stuff, and I mentioned them earlier, and I wanted to make sure I yeah, that told was amazing. you guys about them. Wow. So, but that's really cool that you did, uh, you got to go on a field trip and do that. Man, yeah. we didn't have field trips that cool when my son was in I school. Know, it was pretty amazing. It's really fun. So, yeah, like, oh my god, even, I I see, I'm trying and to it understand makes me that. wonder if Is it they, white ink? No, I think Is that it really... they used a resistance, like a, a wax or something. Yes, and then... Just and then washed watercolor over the top. And it makes me means... wonder if there's a resistance wax or if you can use yeah. a little wax with your... Like, there's some kind of clear resistance ink that you can use. How would you know? Oh, my gosh. How, I mean, because it's so beautiful. I, mm -hmm. Yeah. That's really cool. No, this stuff Or a is... bleach? I don't know. Could you do some kind of bleaching of the... I don't know. You could <laughs> definitely experiment. For yeah. sure. There are a couple things... When you get new nibs, I should have mentioned this talking in nibs, but I just thought I said wax out loud and it made me remember that when you get a new nib, it's often pretty oily is it, to preserve it for shipping, and some of them have a little coating of wax. So what you do is you get a little bowl with really hot soapy water. Oh, okay. And you put your new nib. If you buy a nib and sometimes it doesn't work right and you're like, what the fuck is wrong with this thing? That's why. Ah. It needs to be washed first. And then always dry your nibs thoroughly and dry them off immediately. After. Don't leave ink on them. Don't let them dry out. Like, treat them well. Yeah. Because they'll last you a really long time if you treat them nicely. Oh, cool. But if yeah. you just, you know, if you treat them the way I paint my, treat my paintbrushes, <laughs> then they aren't going to last you very long. Yeah. But definitely go to our Pinterest board because look at... Uh, with watercolor. Yeah, with watercolor. There's... There are so many examples on our Pinterest board. And we have examples of pens and stuff up. We have examples of artwork that was done with calligraphy pen. Uh, check it out. And I think that y'all can... Y'all? Did I just <laughs> fucking turn into a southern belle all of a sudden? <laughs> I think that there are a lot of really interesting ways that this can be incorporated into your mixed media artworks. Yeah. Even if you're not yeah, just definitely. using calligraphy... And I feel like it's it's a pretty because you're using paper. I feel like it's a pretty forgiving uh, way to experiment. Yeah, like you can just fuck around with it and see something you like. Yeah, and you don't even have to. That's the cool thing about it. I don't really like. I said I don't really know all the strokes. For like, I mean, I know like the most that I can remember from the class I took is you apply pressure going down and ease pressure going up. So your downstrokes are heavier, your upstrokes are lighter. Even with just that little bit of knowledge, you can experiment with your handwriting and, and your print style and cursive and just come up with your own really unique lettering for whatever project you're doing. Mm -hmm. And again, write a fucking letter once in a while, people. Really. <laughs> letter writing? Do I have to? You just do can. have to. <laughs> Okay. My pen pals that I haven't written to in months yeah. are calling me a douchebag right now. Oh, If they're yeah. listening to this. Uh-huh. So, if you have any ideas, awesome ideas about calligraphy, or any comments about calligraphy, or suggestions for other li other listeners about calligraphy, you can email us at twoartsygals at gmail.com. You can call our Google Voice line, which is 503 503- 395-7190 and leave us a voicemail and we'll play it on the show and respond to it. Uh, you can get to us through our Facebook page. 
Ooh, ooh. And I think we forgot to remember last Oh yeah. Last week to remind people, but we are having a giveaway. When when our Facebook page reaches two hundred likes, we are gonna give away a collaborative mixed media art piece that Lonnie and I made together. So it's gonna be so cool. Yeah, all you have to do to qualify for it, to get your name in the running, is go like our Facebook page. And then tell your friends to like our Facebook page so they can get in on it too. Yeah. And as soon as we reach two hundred, we're gonna draw a name and then we're gonna make a cool piece of art. Yep. So do that. Yes. Tell everybody about our Facebook page. Damn it. We want everybody to like us. Yeah. I like almost, it when you like me. I like it when you like me too. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's see. We're on all the social medias. We're at two RC gals on Instagram, on Twitter, on whatever else we do. I don't know. <laughs> you can find them all linked on our website, which is two artsygals.com. You can just go up, um, on the right side. There's a little sidebar that has a little button for all of our social media pages that you can follow us on. So yeah. And you can also, uh, subscribe to us on iTunes and Stitcher, and if you do that, you'll get a fresh episode every week and not have to worry about when our new ones go up, and you can leave us some awesome feedback there. That would be great if you did, because if we could go to your personal face wall thing, I don't know, we'd leave you good feedback. Yeah. We would, because you are awesome listeners. Yep. So next week, Lonnie and I are going to be talking about tape, because tape is awesome and we're gonna tell you all kinds of cool stuff about it so until next week make some cool shit yo do it now